This meeting is being recorded. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right, well, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just read the script for the virtual meetings. Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 21, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Uh, members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so um, with the Zoom link that's been provided on the website. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via Zoom. Um, in the event that you're unable to do so, uh, for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post the recording of this meeting on the town's YouTube channel um, and minutes will be also posted as well. So I think we then need to go through and just do an audio check and make sure everybody can hear and be heard. Um, so uh, I'll just go across the screen. Um, Julianne? Sorry, I was muted. I am here. <laughs> Thanks. Rachel? Here and can hear. Thank you. Here and can hear. Love it. <laughs> here, here. Cole? Yep. Christy? Hi, everyone. Um, Robin? Yeah. And Arthur? Hey. Great. Nice to see you all tonight. Um, it's, I think, my, my thinking is that we have a fairly, whoops, getting some echo there. We'll have a fairly short meeting tonight. Uh, short meeting tonight. Huh. huh. Is there anything I can do on my? I, can do on my I think um, I keep seeing Robin's thing come up whenever the echo starts. So maybe if everybody could uh, mute themselves when you're not speaking, I think that'd be the best course of action. Excellent suggestion. Mine's clay and inverted, so there might be something wrong with it. Um, that was a good good suggestion, Arthur. Thank you. So, um, the minutes were sent out from our previous meeting shortly after that meeting. Um, does anybody have discussion or notes on those? Um, so, seeing none, I guess we would take a we would take a motion to approve them. Oh, and you know what? Our, our note taker is not here tonight. So um, I will take, I'll do my best, or unless somebody else would like to, I can, I can type into the agenda, unless somebody else would like to take the minutes. I can take minutes if you have a, yeah. That'd be great, Cole. Thank you. Um, so could we have a, anybody want to make a motion to approve the minutes? Julianne. I motion to approve. I'll second. Uh, I guess we'll do a roll call vote. Rachel. Yep. Yep. Cool. Cool. Yes. Yes. Christy. Christy. Yes. Yes. Robin. Robin. Yes. And Arthur. Yes. All right. Great. Um, Cole, thank you so much for doing that tonight. Um, okay, so the agenda, as I said, I sent it out kind of last minute. I apologize for that. Um, there, there are a couple of items that were not previously anticipated that we'll bring up during new business. Um, one is a, uh, another grant amendment request that came through. And then another one is, um, Rachel pointed out, we wanted to have a discussion about uh, rate possible, possible regular meeting times. So we can um, cover those. But I think the first item um, on the agenda is certainly one that I, I should just let Julianne kind of speak to because she's put an incredible amount of work into it. Um, and it's an amendment request. I, I believe, do we have a formal amendment request at this point for uh, Yusufa? We do, yes. He sent in the, the paperwork. That was what Cindy, you also had in the, the email, but he'd sent it to us. Yeah. So I, I don't, I guess there's no easy way to distribute the paperwork here to everyone, but I can I can go through it. Um, the basics of it is for um, Yusufa Sidibe's 2021 project. 
um, he, he, he did not complete it. Um, and then he subsequently applied and was also awarded a 2022 um, uh, grant as well. So he um, initially asked for reimbursement for a session that he did over at UMass. Um, that session, as it turns out, was not open to the public in any way. It wasn't broadcast and it absolutely does not meet our criteria, honestly, to even consider reimbursing for that. Um, so over the weekend, he, he drafted um, a new amendment request and his new plan is he would like to complete um, eight recording sessions of uh, 20 minute long performances and then broadcast these eight unique broadcasts on Amherst TV um, between May 20th and June 24th. Um, he has confirmed with Amherst TV that they do have scheduling time. They actually came back to him and said, hey, we're, we're short on music programming. We really need that, that'd be great. Um, and uh, he believes that he, you know, he can get this, this done now, finally. Now, um, there are many things that have changed for, for the 2021 project versus the, the initial grant. So I had a conversation with him earlier today and you know, I explained that anytime we have a change like this, one, we have to make sure that it actually meets our grant criteria. So for instance, that UMass class that he did to a bunch of tuition paying students has no public benefit because it's not open to the public. So we have to look at this new proposed amendment and make sure that it one meets all our criteria, which I believe it does. Um, but also evaluate it, you know, for, you know, does it still have a comparable public value? Uh, so here's, here's what has changed. Um, the dates clearly, um, this has gone from being an instructional series of videos, it was supposed to be 10 instructional videos for the K through 12 set as kind of an after school thing during the pandemic. It is now kind of a straight up performance of meditative music instead. Um, it certainly doesn't exclude a K to 12 audience, but I, th I think we can all guess that it really is, it's not the same K to 12 audience. Um, it has the potential you know, of having a nice long reach particularly because they would be broadcast and then they would be part of the, the library of on-demand um, videos and Amherst Media's uh, YouTube collection as well. Um, the other kind of big change is this, this was put through as a $2,000 total grant for 10 sessions in 2021. And at this point he's able to do eight performance broadcast sessions. Um, and he would like to, to still receive the full 2000 at 250 stipend per um, broadcast and performance as opposed to 200 per broadcast and performance earlier. Um, keeping in mind that before the earlier format, it was kind of like you show up, you do a live interactive performance and it's done. Whereas now with this, he needs to go into the studio, record it, Elia edit it, um, and, and then broadcast it. So he does um, have some different time commitments of his own in, in doing this work. So I think we can, we can open it up to discussion and questions from, from there. So I just want to say, uh, and I have not, I've only seen, I have not seen the entirety of the correspondence that has gone on, but um, Julian especially, but Julian and Robin as well have really seen a lot of correspondence on, out of Yusufa. And, and um, I think we've, we've worked very hard to try to treat this grantee as fairly as we possibly can, um, especially given that we've all recognized some language barriers and things and, and really, I think extended every last possible, you know, effort we possibly could to this individual. Um, and so I, I thought that recap, you captured the salient points very, very well. And, and there's a lot of other, there's a lot of other stuff that, you know, came and went throughout the process to get to that. The only question that I have that I don't think I heard you address um, is, uh, you know, assuming that we are considering, uh, obviously, an amendment request, are we thinking about a new deadline to complete these eight recordings? 
He's put in here that the broadcast would be completed um, between May 20th and June 24th. Okay. And um, so one could consider that, that those are the dates and that is the deadline. Um, knowing the realities of things, I, don't, I think it wouldn't hurt for us to, you know, I don't know whether it'd be the end of June or middle of July or something like, like that. Um, Cause I, you know, I certainly don't want him to get into doing all of this. And then there's a snag on broadcasting it and, you know, that's unforeseen to him. But I, I, when I spoke with him earlier, I was clear. I said, listen, these amendments for 2021 should be done. This is a, you know, a 2021 project. It really should be, be done. So if we can get something done, it needs to get done now because this is seriously late. So we, cause he, when I said something about, are you sure you can get those, um, program broadcast dates. I don't know. Can we leave it up open-ended? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't ever really have open-ended um, projects ever. So at this point, absolutely not. And he was absolutely lovely to speak to, you know. Um, I would I would really be very pleased to, to see him follow through on this, but it'll be done when it's done. And I'll, I'll believe that and see that when that happens at this point. I see Rachel had a question or comment. Yeah, I have two questions. Uh, first of all, I'm sure, first of all, thank you all for spending so much time just kind of, you know, trying to accommodate and manage this whole situation. I mean, just from not knowing anything about it, it sounds like we're basically entertaining a new proposal altogether. Um, Pretty much and, correct, yeah. Right, so retroactively, um, for a budget year that's already passed. Um, so that's if I were to look at just kind of the factual components, that's what that's what how I interpret it. And then the other, um, so is that something that we are talking about making an exception for? Um, because it sounds like he, this person hasn't received the money obviously, right? Because we haven't gone into direct granting. And then my-, my let, me, next, let me answer that. Okay. If you can hold the other, I, yeah. I don't have a sense that we're truly making an exception in that so many 2021 grants were modified in so many ways, right down to just, you know, some, some groups took capital expense money to, to you know, keep their doors open and things like that. Um, so I, I, I think as far as exceptions go, go yes, it's late. <laughs> But aside from that, I think it's all within the realm of the kind of revisions that we did. Um, and in the end, there's still a need, you know, an absolute need for music that's being communicated and he has, you know, the potential to deliver it in the next six weeks. So, um, which I think has more public benefit uh, than, you know, groups that were just keeping their doors open. Right, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, because I was gonna say that if, if based on, how you you're explaining this um is that it's it would seem fair to me if we just had a hard deadline in this case right it's like okay if this is all done by june 30th or whatever date you know we then here's your grant money um you know based on um our agreement or vote or whatever here and then i guess my other question which i don't know whether it's relevant or not to this conversation is that um you all mentioned that we as a council also um, granted the same person something for the year that yes. just passed or the cycle that just passed. So that's um, that's just a direct grant. So that has no bearing whatsoever on what's already. Yes, I can, I can speak past. to that too. I didn't wanna to go too, too far into it, but um, Yusufa had put a date of completing the 2022 grant as, as January 10th, 2022. That date has passed. So. Um, he will need to amend his 2022 grant as well. Um, I told him as far as, you know, we had to get the 2021 done today. You know, I didn't ask him to put that amendment in today, um, but he does need to do that. Um, he's clear that, that there can't be any crossover. So um, what I believe he's planning to do, sorry about the dog, is to, um, amend the 2022 with new dates that are after this series 
Um, and he also needs to change that because for that one, he's also switching it to a performance um, format uh, and instead of being um, more of, a, of an instructional format. Uh, Does yeah. anybody understand a word with the dog? <laughs> I understood. I had a question about that though, because, and, and I agree with you, it's, we'd be best to just make a decision on FY21 and then, you know, sort out slash help him sort out FY22. I, I do think we need to do that, but just in the interest of having the information out there, the FY22 proposal was essentially a, an instructional workshop broadcast through Amherst Media. And, and I don't believe it was, it was not like a, uh, inter, an interactive workshop, was it? Is that, is that correct? Um, I, I have to say that, let me see if I can move away from this. There's, there's a little bit of um, poor um, process on our parts as far as the 2021 and 2022 grants, because in preparation for my call with him, I went back and read them, I copied and pasted them. And quite frankly, his 2022 grant is pretty much a copy and paste of the 2021 grant. Um, I mean, some organizations do that, they do very similar work, but I, I have to be honest, I don't, I don't feel like we did our proper due diligence on this one to have made as large an award as, as we have, especially knowing that he hadn't followed through on the 2021. Um, but that said, you know, he, he certainly can put in an amendment request, but at, at, at this point, you know, if you want to get legal about it, if he takes that, the, the check right now and spends it without putting an amendment request for a date other than January 10th, he's already out of compliance. So the only reason, no, and I, I agree, the date needs to be figured out, certainly. Um, as well as the, the format and the content. But just based on that alone, he, right. he did not deliver anything like this January 10th. So he's not compliant no matter what. The the only difference, well, there might there's probably are on multiple, but I know there's a difference between FY21 doing a series of 10 workshops for school kids and then FY22 doing it on Zoom. And it was explicitly on Zoom because it was gonna be interactive. That was, and I remember that being a very exciting thing and that had not happened when we received the FY22 application. The FY22 application yeah. for one single event on Amherst Media. So that would not be interactive. That would be a, a presentation of the drumming for 3,500 of which we were awarded 700, Robin saying no, of which we awarded 700. We awarded 700, but it wasn't for one. It was very unclear, but I believe he said 300 per performance, which is why I'm not, I don't understand how, why we get him 700. So it was for at least two performances. Yes, yeah. for, it was the same, but 50% uh, more per performance. Okay, let me open the question. Oh, I, yeah, you're right. So the narrative so says 3,500. He had a total budget of three 300 right. if, because he didn't fill it out properly. And we had even discussed whether we wouldn't just, you know, whether we could exceed the, the requested amount, which was 300. And, and there we made an exception to, to go above and beyond. Um, but, uh, you know, the direct granting, there's there's not a whole lot we can do at this point to stop it, although I have advised him that he needs to amend. And when he does amend, that, that means that we can look at the public benefit of 2022 and award it less if we, you know, feel that, that uh, it, it doesn't have the same merits as what he put out there. And I think as far as where we are with 2021, one, we have to decide if we're willing to let him extend and do this at all, period. You know, is, is it even being, uh, you know, is it a possible option? And two, we have to look at, you know, can the total grant amount stand as it is, or do we need to reevaluate it for public benefit? And then at the end of the day, he only gets any kind of reimbursement once everything's done and he's given us all the documentation that we need. So for 2021, we're, very, we're really very much in control. We just need to decide what we think is appropriate based on all of these significant changes.
Robin. Are the performances going to be different? Yes, these are these yes, are eight these are unique different performances. So I agree. Let's just let's let's get an FY21 decision made and and we should go back and parse out 22 at a later date. So so talking about 21, um, I'll just give Robin's question is a really important one. You know, uh, eight unique performances are very different than rebroadcasting the same thing eight times. So that I think is a key first question. Um, the overall award amount maximum, right? We're talking about really the maximum at this point because you know it's it's going to be per performance. The overall award amount staying at two thousand. He's he's also proposing or requesting to up the per performance amount from two hundred to two fifty. My understanding from what I, I gleamed, Julianne, was that that is largely due to the fact that there is going to be some, probably not a lot, but some editing on the back end of these of these eight. So, you know, there is a little bit more work there. And, and then I would also say that previously it was going to be just sort of a turn on your Zoom and interact. Now he's going to be working through Amherst Media in some way. And so that that could also add some additional, I don't, I don't know what, but some additional back and forth. So I think what I'm hearing is that a perspective motion would be something like, and I think Rachel actually hits on the most important thing, which is let's set a date and just ask him to submit his reimbursement materials by that date. And, you know, that really will be kind of the most, the essence is, is, is will there be work done? But so I guess I'm hearing, I'm hearing a motion that would involve a date change, a format change from Zoom to Amherst Media, and a rate change for, you know, a new a new type of work. So the same overall maximum or total award, but the rate changes based and, and that rate changes is, is tied to a new type of work. So um, is that, does that sound like it's, is that everything that we really need to sort of decide on? I believe so. Robin. So what he's doing may cost more per session than if he had done what he proposed, he broke the grant, he decided the amount. Um, and that was interactive workshop and that was with students, which to me is very different benefit. So I would even be okay with expending the time a little bit, um, but I'm not okay with increasing the amount at all. And I've said this back and forth, but not to the whole group. Um, it's just, to me, it's it's probably not legal. It's not fair to every other grantee, unless we increase their stipends as well or decrease the work. Um, you know, if he had done what he said he was gonna do, he wouldn't have these extra costs. Um, and it's just, you know, we can get audited. And I don't know how we're gonna explain that. And to me, it's just, it's just, no, it's just not doable. Um, I, I'm not sure we need eight or 10 performances, but I'm willing to go along with it at this point. But that part, I'm, I'm, I'm not. And that's just, you know, me, one person. But. So do the others have questions or, or comments on this? I mean, uh, you know, I, I take Robin's point. I think we're we're likely, you know, it'd be better to vote on a single motion rather than, you know, so so uh, the goal here, I think, should be to try to get a single motion, you know, to then communicate back to the grantee. Um, so it's going to be hard, you know, uh, it'd be hard to take a, hard those things. Uh, go ahead. Can we yeah. take a, a, you know, just a soft indication rather than a motion of who would support going forward, yes or no, at all? With the date, the number, and the amount? No, no, oh. just just in general. Who's, who supports allowing any kind of amendment, or do we just reject the amendment outright regardless? Is there anybody who wants to outright reject the amendment? OK, I, I, I think that's clear. So then it really comes down to you know, we need a motion. Um, 
as far as what the, the appropriate compensation is, given the public benefit has changed, the audience has changed, it's, it's, it's not instructional, it's, you know, performance and meditative music, and it's many lovely things, but, um, you know, does, does that end up impacting the, the uh, public benefit and the compensation for it? Cool. I was just gonna say that I think there's clear public benefit with the amended proposal. I like the idea that's gonna go out through Amherst Media that people will be able to see it. And I would support just doing it at 200 per performance, keep the rate the same. And you know, that's, I think, I think we've been very flexible. I think that would be fair. Yeah, and I, I was actually gonna suggest the same thing. And I would also say that eight is a number that, I don't know, you know, he, he originated that number. That's his number. I think us saying that, you know, we'll give you 200 per and you can do up to 10 is reasonable within the parameters of the, the grant as well. Well, I would, I would just make the motion given on what you all just said that however many you're able to produce by this date is what we're going to pay for because we have our funding and our budget, you know, to kind of account for right at the end. So that's, that would be my, my suggestion, I guess, you know, the 200 per session but you only do three we'll give you 600 by this day but if you do 11 we can only give you 2000 right <laughs> so that's the that's the one difference Cap, capped it yeah yeah well rachel that sounds like a motion and I, i'm not seeing anybody who's indicating you know opposition or or so do you want to do you want to make that as a, as a motion well one thing do we want to put a minimum though because otherwise i don't know if we're going to get any and that's up to him then, right? Right, but if we put a minimum of, he has to do at least three or five or whatever, up to 10, or just leave it open. I mean, that's, I'm wondering if you want to add the minimum. I mean, I'd hate, to, I'd hate to have him do two and not give him anything because we said the minimum was three, I guess, is my- I don't, I don't see a risk in just leaving it, you know, per broadcast performance at that point. He just, if he does none, he does none. If he does one, he does one, you know. Okay. Right, it's really up to him then to, do, you know, to say, okay, this is the time frame in which I, can, I have to work and this is what I can reasonably produce and I will be reimbursed at 200 up to 10 within that period, right? So that, that seems fair given what you outlined in terms of, you know, giving people more leeway because of, how everyone's had to operate. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, Rachel, if you want to make that as a motion, I guess I would ask Cole, if, if, <laughs> as the note taker, if you want to try to formulate that. But, but I think the the three pieces are, are clear to everybody, right? The, well, actually, deadline. I mean, I would be comfortable pushing the deadline to, you know, being of all the things that that I think we need to be, you know, sticklers on. I. I'm, I'm more flexible on the deadline personally, you know, and saying even July 15th or something just for the sake of, of you know, good faith, but um, deadline, number of performances and rate, those are the three pieces that we're, we're kind of agreeing on, right? Sure, Robin, for your purposes, is there is there a deadline in terms of what you have to file for a certain grant cycle? Yeah. Not really. I mean, there's no, there's no annual reports yeah, or audits in terms of. Mm. No, but we do need to have this done before we go into the next rant cycle. So, is that if money left over, we can use it right. for the next 20 years because it's really not fair to withhold that money if it's not going to get used. So, but um, yeah, town wise, there isn't. The, you know, the money has been set aside for it. it's not being used for anything else until we release it, either by paying him or just releasing it back into our funds for the next grand year. So, so what's the date on that so then? I mean, like, when do we want, because I'll make the motion right now. I just need to know what date to say. I think July 15th sounds good. Like Matt said, that's cool with everyone. That's cool. 
That's good. Sure. So then I'll motion to approve the amendment request with the change in form and forum, with the exception that his fee will be $200 per performance, and he will have until July 15th to complete the performances and submit a reimbursement request. I think we needed a maximum of 10 performances and maximum $2,000. Yeah. With a maximum of 10 performances and $2,000. I'll second that, Cole. Okay, I would do a roll call, roll call vote unless there's any other discussion. So I'm an aye, Julianne. Aye. Um, Christy? Aye. Uh, Robin? Aye. Arthur? Yes. And Leah? Yes. And I was going to ask, did you get Rachel? Uh, she made, oh, I'm sorry. I, second, did, I seconded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For next year and future grant cycles, now that we have reimbursement funding, are we going to like be keeping closer track of like grant projects and if they're if they're using the money, like if they didn't use the money? Because I know, like, would there be like a spreadsheet or something to keep track of that that we would look at while doing the grant cycle, or do you think that would like meddle with the process of looking at things with fresh eyes? No, it's a it's a good question and. It's actually a little trickier now that we're doing direct granting, because what we really have to do is, you know, at the end of the cycle, we need to verify that. And this is, I think that the date is very clear to the grantees. We need to verify they've all submitted their final reports and that, that so in, instead of them giving us documentation and then, then we know we can release the funds, we release the funds when we get them and they provide us the supporting documentation at the end. So. That's a lot of what we were struggling with in making the decision was, oh, geez, you know, now we are going to have to, you know, really be on top of these final reports. And at some point, you know, if somebody is unwilling or unable to submit the final report, um, you know, we have to ask for the money back. So it's, it's, you're absolutely right. It's um, even more in, in, on us to, to keep track. Um, Julianne, please. And yet at the same time, it's been, complicated because you know essentially anyone who has a future date for a performance at the time the checks are going out has the benefit of the doubt that they'll just do it and people who have a, an earlier date so yusufa had a you know january 10th date um we can't um, give them the benefit of the doubt because it didn't happen doubt. and yet it's you're, you're strangely singling someone out because they chose an earlier date you know so it's it's an interesting situation that we're in and you know I going into this I've never wanted to you know police the grantees you know I want to try to extend everybody the best benefit of the doubt and be supportive of them um, but I think it's a good call out Leah that by the time we get to the next round and people are reapplying we're really going to want to know what their follow-through was Yeah, and I, I would just say that that's something we should really think about hard for next year is I, I, I agree and I don't think it's a fair, it's just a it's just a, a loophole or a wrinkle in the in the process that you know there's however many months between our decision and the actual checks going out and people whose performances fall within that within that window I would hate to hold their fun, you know, I don't think that's fair and I think we need to re re just reevaluate how we're going to handle that I don't think we can solve it right now, um, but but I think we do need to reevaluate it. Robin. Oh, you're muted, Robin. Is that better? Yes. Okay. So um, I received a contract for something that's supposed to happen in December that I'm pretty sure didn't happen. And so I, you know, sent email and said, could you let me know if this happened, if it did send documentation, if it didn't, and you want to try to have this, you know, December 2022, then just submit a request for extension. You know, I haven't heard back from this person. There's been several attempts, but basically if I know it was supposed to have happened and they 
haven't submitted the final report, which some people have, then I just ask them to submit documentation or, um, or request an extension. Yeah. Or, and yeah. I haven't submitted those yet until I get one of those. So that's just the way, you know, it goes. It will, you know, next year it won't be as obvious if we do direct funding because we're kind of in the other end of the cycle, but, you know, um, and it, it is being tracked. I'm tracking it and it's tracking it, but we'll see what happens as it goes on if there's a lot that it, it looks like can happen. Um, you know, we have a lot of grantees. The towns I contacted don't have this many grantees, so it wasn't quite this large of a piece of work for them to follow. And some have split it and assigned different numbers to follow, you know, five grantees, you know, and they've done their gig and all of that. But, um, I don't know if we're going to have to do that. I don't, I don't think we're really going to have to go after that many people. I think most people are doing their gigs. They want to, and they are submitting the reports. Um, I, you know, I think we should. Uh, you know, oh, sorry. Okay. I mean, I, and I, I think you're doing okay. the right thing now. I, what I think we ought to do is we ought to consult with MCC yeah. uh, before this next grant cycle opens up about how strictly we are monitoring slash policing the the date of the event in in this in the new direct granting model um, because there's a part of me that just says you know you make a compelling case to us we review it we award it um then you at the end of the year prove to us that you did it and and our you know and it just takes the pressure off of us to to as you know as, as a couple of people have said police when you know did this thing actually happen at you know, 9 a.m. on the 23rd of, of February, you know, you, we gave you the money because we believe in what you want to do, you know, and, and at the end of the year, you proved to us that you did that thing. So it's, I'm not saying that's, that's necessarily the position I want to take. I just think we should explore it with MCC because I get the sense looking at other towns at their grant guidelines that ours are probably more rigorous or, or something than, than others. Um, so just, just a conversation. Leah, please. Um, yeah, I was first going to say it's interesting because when we made, when we talked about direct granting, I think that was like August and it definitely looked like very different like trajectory for COVID at that time. And then kind of as like we neared into winter, I think like I feel like when we were in August, we were in a really good place. And like I thought this year was going to be like very different with like venue cancellations and stuff. And this year, again, we've had just like unpredictable surges and stuff. So I'm really hopeful that next year there will be less of that. But like, I mean, I guess you just can't do anything to prevent that. But it's just like hard. It's hard to have a thing that's so dependent off of sticking to the, the location and the date when that's just like changing so much and it's just like hard for everyone. But also how are people proving it? Like, what does that process look like? And what are we looking for in that? So we can uh, forward out to, oh, go ahead, Rob. Robin. No, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same as reimbursement. They just have to show, um, you know, it depends on budget, uh, invoices for, you know, people or, uh, rentals or sound or whatever it is, and that it happened. Um, and most people also submit, you know, how they promoted it. So we'll get flyers and, um, you know, a whole, some people send an entire budget thing. Some people send, you know, two pieces of paper. Some people say, oh, you could, you know, see it on YouTube. This is, you know, and it happened now or, um, a copy of you know the review in the paper or really anything that just shows it um, is okay and it's really not any different than the reimbursement um, it's, you know yeah so 
just that we know it happened. And there's there's a there's a um, there's a grant final report. It's just a simple one page form that they fill out, and then we ask them for accompanying, like Robin said, you know, receipts and other and other evidence. So I want to I want to move us along a little bit, just in the interest of time. Um, I know on the agenda we had indicated uh, sort of a recap of the accessibility session. Um, I will say, recap was fabulous. Um, you know, Charles. Uh, does Baldwin does a wonderful job with the content. He put together a fabulous slide deck. Uh, we recorded it. We have his slides. I'm just waiting for them. They were sharing a lot of links to resources in the chat. And I'm just waiting for them to send me that list of links. And then I'll ask um, uh, Cindy to post. We're, we'll post it all on our website and we'll have it there for as a resource for folks. I, I genuinely think if anybody seriously wants to explore this topic, that that session will be of value to our grantees. And it's something that we could, I was thinking in next year's award letters, we could just link to it and be like, you know, here is, here's a really useful, you know, um, overview of accessibility in the arts kind of a thing. And um, I, I think the action item that I, I want to put out there, and we, we probably, I don't think tonight's the night we're going to make a decision on action here, but, you know, we, we do have funds set aside about, you know, 20, we have a roughly 2,500 plus others if we need it um, to fund a fall event around accessibility and very loosely defined. We were hoping that, you know, this previous session would give us some ideas in terms of what we're going to do at that session. Um, so, you, you know, I, I guess I would, I don't, I don't know that we have any clear action we can take, but, but maybe just a little discussion of what we want to, you know, what direction we want to steer the ship in terms of that event. I don't have, yeah. sorry. Go ahead, um, go ahead, Joanne. I was just gonna say that I love the idea of, of you know, including it in materials that we're sending out to grantees, um, both before they apply and, and in their award letter. Um, it's gonna be great. Uh, Robin, uh, Rachel, I'm sorry, Rachel. Yeah, I just wanted to um, say that it was a really, really good session. And um, I'm going to have to leave at seven o'clock. I don't know how long this meeting is supposed to go for, but I just wanted to um, say that in the context of accessibility, because I had sent everybody an email about, are we going to try to set a regular time for meetings going forward? And now, as I thought more about the um, uh, Charles's presentation, I realized that there might be a number of factors we need to consider if we were going to try to set a regular meeting time because this time might not work for everybody. Um, um, so uh, that was just something I wanted to throw out there in case you guys do get to that discussion after I've had to go. So, but I mean, in the context of, you know, all of us having different functional limitations or not, you know, that um, something maybe to consider if we want to have regular meeting times. That's all, thanks. And I'll see you all um, later if I need to go at seven. Well, uh, you know, I, I'm fine if others would like to jump that topic up since Rachel, you, you know, you brought up an email and you're bringing it up now. I'm, I'm fine to open that now if, if we wanna pause on the accessibility piece for a second and and just talk about that. Do you have a um, proposal or, or thoughts in terms of, you know, how you wanna, how we should handle this? Rachel? Um, I just thought that if we have some general guidelines in, in terms of what we want to consider. So for example, do we need to meet every month? That's a start, right? I mean, I know that that was something that um, was introduced relatively, I mean, I don't know, but during the grant cycle, yes, we're meeting more regularly, but in between grant cycles is, do we want to have meetings every month? That's like the first question. And then um, my initial thought when I asked the group was just more like, okay, it helps us all to plan to be able to put the dates in the calendar early. Um, but then I thought maybe it, it can't just be like first Tuesday of every month, if that just doesn't work for some of us. So it, it could just be, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what people's schedules are like. So um, it was just a question that I had. Um, 
And we don't have to take up more time discussing it today if I'm the only one who thinks, oh, that might be helpful to, to know um, in advance for our own respective calendars. Um, so that's, I, yeah, I don't have proposals in terms of when that meeting time should be, um, but I don't know if we need to be re meeting every month as a whole group. That's just a question. Julia? Yeah, so generally I'm, I'm a, a champion of, of, you know, setting a time monthly and then it's just there. And I think a lot of, of bodies like us do operate in exactly that, that way for planning purposes. Um, as far as do we need to meet every month? No, but having a scheduled meeting time um, doesn't mean that we are required to meet. We would only meet if there's something that we need to discuss, deliberate and vote on. And what's happened is in years past, yes, there was, a, you know, maybe even a six month uh, or longer lull where there weren't any meetings. Um, but in the, the, these rolling changes that we've had with, with COVID and that are continuing, we are finding that there is some amendment or something that we seem to need to vote on every month. I'd have to look back at all of our agendas since um, the grant deliberations closed out, but I, I don't think there's been a single month that we could have skipped voting because we had to respond to, to grantees. Now, we, we could just, you know, let them wait. And, and that could happen. If we can't get a quorum together, then they're going to have to wait. Um, but in general, you know, I would support kind of having a regularly scheduled meeting and only meeting if there's a need to meet, not just meetings to have meetings. Um, but as far as what the right time for that is, um, the, the makeup of this council is going to, to change quite a bit um, in the next couple of months. So one of the reasons the timing is going to change is different people come and go who have different scheduling needs. So I think Matt's work to really accommodate, you know, a large group of us, a group that's gotten larger, I think, um, than it was when I first started. And um, that's, you know, so that we can, all attend. Um, but yeah, there's, there's no simple answer. I don't think we'll quite solve it tonight. Uh, maybe we could at least find out if everybody agrees that we'd like to try to get to a point of a regular, you know, one monthly time slot and see what we can do. I mean, I'm, I'm a planner. So when I hear, when I hear the notion of just getting a calendar out there, or just a recurring every first Tuesday at six or whatever, you know, even if it's an inconvenient time, if it's every first Tuesday at four, and I can plan that a couple months in advance, you know, um, that's, that, that's very attractive to me. And, you know, that does, it, typically we do tend to meet, well, no, that's not true. It's usually it's Tuesdays, but, but it drifts beginning or end of the month. I, I have to say, to echo what Julianne's point, I, I haven't had a a set a meeting yet with ACC where we haven't had at least one grantee thing that they required some action and I take the point about letting them wait and and I think it's something to if we explore the you know some of these questions with MCC around you know maybe we don't need to amend you know you, you want to go Saturday instead of Sunday you know maybe we don't need to formally amend every every last performance date in the future um, I would be comfortable with a more hands-off approach to grantee management, honestly. I mean, I, I do feel like sometimes we're, particularly for people who want our approval, <laughs> you know, we really get sucked into uh, a lot of a lot of approving that that maybe we don't need to within the MCC parameters. You know, I, I think I, I gather just looking at websites that different cultural, cultural councils have different approaches to it. So um, I think I think those are all strong points. Um, Strongest I think, point, Matt, I heard was that you said Tuesdays at four. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted I to bring to, it up. I have, to, I have to admit that with, with my narcolepsy, when, when, you know, the later they start, the harder they are for me. Yeah. Um, I, it's, I, I, I flag and I'm not at my best. Um, that's my limitation. You know, I also want to be there when other people are there because no meeting's good if I'll only I show up. Right. But I, 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 if, if it's possible that, you know, we could get them a bit earlier and scheduled ahead, I would 
firmly end endorse that. And I'm also with you that if we can structure things so that we can be less involved um, and just be more supportive of the artists, and uh, I, I'd love that. And I don't think we need to have a stranglehold on things as long as they're coming through for the community. So I, it's dangerous because I feel like we're getting dangerously close to making a motion here that we do, or even it, don't even call it a motion, but just you know coming to a an agreement. Um, and I, I threw out four, but and and I know Joy has said that's not available to her, but Joy also is likely role. I mean, I'm, I hate to share this without her being here, but she's likely to be moving out of Amherst in the next couple of months. She's she's shared with us very openly, so you know it's it's hard to accommodate. You can't accommodate everybody. I think is is a problem, and we just do our best with it. But but I think that being said, if somebody was was going to be staying on for another uh, three year term, three year ter three year term, and they said there's no way that I could do a meeting at two or four, just given my work constraints, we'd have to respect that as well, you know, and, and sort of keep on working outside the box. So. Um, and unfortunately, I'm looking at the screen and we know Cole is, is leaving. We know Arthur's leaving, um, you know, uh, and so so I guess there's four of us, five of us here um, who, you know, who would have a vested say in that or, or a vested stake anyway in the discussion. Um, maybe we, you know, maybe we come back to it next month. Cole, Cole I see your hand is up, but, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if we're ready to make that that judgment yet. I was just going to say that um, any time that you do choose, it might be worth thinking about, you know, different groups of people and, and what would be most accessible to them, the highest number of people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and the public, you know, we don't get a lot of public attendance, but that's always a factor as well. So something to bear in mind. So we can just wait until we have new members on board, like later in the year, hopefully, right, to to revisit this. Okay, thank you. No, thank you for bringing it up. I think it's a really important question, Rachel. So um, if, if nobody objects, I we do have an action item, <laughs> speaking of grantee correspondence, we do have an action item that Robin flagged for, for us late. Um, it's a fairly simple one, but I feel like it's something we wanna make sure we take care of. So does anybody mind if we, if we move uh, Matri's uh, request Matri's up request in, the, in the discussion. In the discussion. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, I agree. So she provides an explanation. Provides an explanation. The, the short version is that she wants to move the date of her grant from May twenty first to um, November. Is is all she says is November. So um, you know, I think the motion would probably be December first as kind of the the new the new deadline, so to speak. Um, So I'll, are we proposing that? I'll, I'll second it. I mean, she gave, you know, basically it's COVID reasons. Right. And, and not being able to get into the tour museum or something when she was in India. And she won't, she's, I guess she'll go back in November or something, but. Cole, I'm gonna type her name into the chat for the sake of, um, I don't, I, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. And I the authors, I this was the thing on Tagore. And she very much wants to do it. I've had a whole bunch of back and forth with her. So she just couldn't get access to materials she was hoping to use because it was closed with COVID in India. <laughs> no. So I guess I motioned, I, I guess I motion, a motion emerged um, from me uh, to move her deadline to the December 1st and Robin seconded. Um, Certainly, we can have further discussion if folks want to hear more about the, the rationale. Um, I think it makes uh, sense. But if not, shall we want to just do a roll call? OK. Um, Cole? Yes. Julianne? Yes. Christy? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Leah? Yes. And Arthur? Yes. Okay, so we are unanimous there. Thank you very much for letting me bump that up a little bit. And I'll let her know. Thank you, Robin. Right, that's an important piece. So, uh, and Julianne obviously will follow up with Yusufa. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, second. Yeah, you second. 
I thought. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> or just one. I thought there were two, but. Oh, oh, a second. No, just Yusufa and, and uh, Maitri that I know, that oh. I know. Um, the only other item that, unless if, if you catch it, please, you know, point it out. The only other item that I put on the agenda, and I, actually I wasn't sure if this is something that needs further discussion or not, but just following up on that um, Amherst Media um, showcase footage question, Julianne, I don't know if there's anything yep. further. Yep, this this will be brief. Um, I finally was able to, you know, get buy in from everyone, but I think that was maybe Friday last week and I haven't had a chance to, to reach out to Jim over at Amherst Media yet. I will reach out to him. It might be a little slow going because I think they're moving sometime soon. They're building, you know, but I think they're being evicted, which didn't sound very promising. Oh, let's hope it's not that bad. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, yes, I, I will reach out to him um, tomorrow because I haven't been able to get to it yet and get, get into the, you know, do they have a release form and some of the content that the artists in particular didn't want to have seen and, and all of that. And also just find out what they want to do and make it clear that there's no additional funding, you know, that goes along with this. Thanks, Rachel, bye. Um, that, um, you know, they asked for it, they're welcome to it, we're welcome to work with them. Um, but we need to better define it. Great. I'm just happy to hear that that's moving forward. And I think that's, you know, they're a key partner in, in showing off the great work that our grantees do. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I actually went in myself in person today just to see the facility and, you know, it's up and running and hopefully they right. have a new home base to, to yeah. land safely soon. Um, you should sit for a payment. I haven't received anything from you for payment for your project. No, I, I have had... Go ahead, Leah. Oh, I said I think Cole was applying for that, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> I haven't sent anything in, so I'm I'm glad you haven't received anything. Um and, and Leah, <laughs> you and I should should speak about it if you if uh if you want. Yeah, because you know we'd, we'd like to pay you so absolutely um robin i dare i dare i ask do we have any word on the release of funds where that stands no oh, i sent you a whole email on it i mean i sent you an email with money and fireworks and <laughs> yes <laughs> for, the, for the group I, for the group so um, yes, yeah, so we finally got the contract and then we finally got the money and the checks went out last Friday. And I know at least one person, one grantee who received it yesterday. Julianne, do you know if Amherst uh, Ballet received it? Okay, so. I think, it, I think it literally was yesterday as well that they received it. Yeah. And, and it went up now. Friday afternoon. So that's pretty fast. So hopefully everybody has received their checks and it was uh 56 of them great I think wonderful one, submitted, one dropped and then there's three or something we're still dealing with something like that. i mean i don't know i have to do the figures but my figures and holly's figures of the numbers worked you know we had the same number so 56 went out and there are 64 grants so it's Excellent work. I, I know, Robin, you had to, to chase that down and it took um, quite, quite a bit of follow up with a lot of different parties. So thank you so much for your, for your efforts there, as well as while it was delayed, there was quite a bit of correspondence with um, folks kindly asking where their money was. So thank you. And even really busy and yeah, everyone will be thrilled once they're paid. So um, thank you. Thank you. So um, I'm sure if someone doesn't receive it soon, they'll, you know, get back to us. But as far as I know, they, all of those went out. No, that's great. Yeah, I, I, I knew that the funds were with the town, but I'm glad you know that the checks came out. So yeah. somebody emailed me right. during the meeting saying, where's my check? So I'll, I'll forward that along uh, to you. And, and um, Yeah, send it to me. I guess too, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. 
So did did you did anybody did you think of was there was there something else that I missed on um uh no, I mean, I think for including okay the two. So yeah, I think so. So taking the point <laughs> that I think point. Rachel made and, and Rachel several made of us and agree on. I mean, you know, I mean, we, you we know. would just not meet until, you know, the first Tuesday in July, although July is not a great, July I'm traveling all month, so that's not a great month for me to meet, but um, if folks want to meet in June, I'm happy to. I, I think we need further discussion on the on the accessibility event, frankly. I think, you know, there, there's definitely some, some discussion that needs to happen there, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable either way. Do, do folks want to meet in June for that sake and, and for the sake of ongoing grant questions? <laughs> well, to Julianne's point, maybe we, we, write the, we write it in now, we schedule it, and then if we decide we don't need it, we, we, don't, we don't meet. I think that makes sense. Um, so that would be June 7th. I, I could do four o'clock on June 7th. I have an appointment with my sleep doctor at four. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is that's pure, pure irony there. That's great. <laughs> um, I could... I could do four o'clock on June eighth. I I could do that, yeah. Or I could do I could do five on uh, uh um on the seventh if Tuesdays are better. I do work until five typically, so five would be better for me. Great. Okay. So five on the seventh, Tuesday the seventh. Mm-hmm. And Cindy, Tuesday and Wednesday are your days, correct? That you're available. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and I can sometimes do Mondays if I need to. Okay. All right. Well, why don't we say five o'clock on June seventh, and then you know, if if truly nothing trickles along, then we can we can um, cancel and reschedule. Um, okay. Well, thanks very much, everybody. I appreciate this meeting and. Um, uh, you know, just all the work that everybody does. Yeah, Cole, really. Cole, will you be coming in June? I don't want I don't want your last meeting to be this, and we just don't even get to say goodbye. This will be my last meeting. Oh, well. ah. You will be missed. You will be, we'll be missed very much, and very really much. Appreciate everything you've done. Everything you've done. Oh, thank you all. It, it, it's been a good time. And I wrote a column in my student newspaper just last week telling people to join this committee and take my spot. So we'll see. <laughs> awesome. Would you send a link to that? Yeah, I can. We're going to need you and call with this. If you're leaving before the end of what your term would be, it would be best if you just wrote an official letter of resignation that we can submit to the town. This yeah, I was, I was planning on writing one. Everyone right. looks for the members. We're going to need quite a few, like four, I think. Mm -hmm. So, one, two, three. Because Jenny is also leaving at the end of her term. So, best of luck to you, Cole. Best of luck to you, Cole. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thanks. Wait, I have one. I have one last quick question, mostly for Robin. I remember last year the cultural district did, uh, I forget what it was called, but it was like a outdoor like arts thing. Do you know if that's happening again, and if they're looking for volunteers? Uh, we will be looking for volunteers for something. We're meeting next week, and apparently Matt is also joining the cultural district. Um, this, pretty this, much you talked about that. Yeah. Yes. yes. Cool. Cool. Yeah, keep me posted because I it was just like very nice to be like 
involved in its space. So yeah. 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 Uh, we definitely, I mean, I had been asked about that. And I said, well, what is it for? And then it's like, oh, we don't know yet. So um, it might be something inside and it might be something outside. And yes, we will need help. So yeah. Thank you. Great. OK, good night, everybody. Thank you. Everyone. Good night, everyone. Take care. Thanks.